Okay, welcome back to members of 121 Community Church in Grapevine, Texas, in our ongoing study in Hans Kuhn's book on being a Christian. We're going to complete part two. Uh, we're going to look at pages 78 to 88. It will wrap up part two of the book. And we're going to take a look at the concept of God and the task of theology. So now we move into concept. Let's begin with block one and take a look at uh, the concept of God. The concept of God has been misused and mauled historically, says Kuhn, but it's a concept that cannot be given up. As a concept, it needs fresh consideration. We need to speak in a new way, referencing the Lagos of God. Under conceptual reflection, God is beneath the surface reality as a depth to be grasped by faith. And it can be diversely interpreted. We pass through conceptual reflection in order to clarify our belief, giving experience conceptual expression. Therefore, note three, ambiguity of concept and conceptual reflection equals a conceptual expression of experience. Experience needs the assurance of reflection. God is that which determines all of reality. God is the permeating supreme principle. Our concept of God begins as an empirical unity of knowing. Therefore, we must purify and deepen our understanding of God. God cannot be equated with the natural processes. No truth is accepted without critical scrutiny. We presuppose the exclusion of God from socio-political power relationships. God in this very life challenges us in the midst of secularism. And God is the true future of man in the world as an imminent transcendence. There you go, as an imminent transcendence. That sounds very similar to Moltmann there. God is future as imminent transcendence. So let's move on from uh, the theoretical principle of imminent transcendence and take a look at uh, task of theology in block two. So God is the permeating supreme principle of imminent transcendence. Now we look at the interpretation of experience. Theology holds a knowledge deeper than mere rationality. This truth becomes convincing when it is lived as practical reason. Our methodology begins from below, from the level of human experience. Human experience is given theological interpretation through the filter of the Christian message, through the filter of the gospel. We do not assume the autonomy of reason. We do affirm a trusting belief. Theology is, as he has said before, it is a venture of risk. We open the self to the real. We open the self to that deeper truth of the real behind surface reality. We accept and respond to the call of the real. Therefore, block two, note three, interpretation of experience and filter of gospel equals the venture of theology facing the real. As a recognition of value, and the ultimate Lagos order. In order to respond to world religion, in order to respond to secular humanism, with the gospel as our decisive criterion. Following triad emerges. We begin with divine disclosure. God discloses himself in the real of the world. Then we take up praxis of interpretation. As disclosure calls us, to a recognition of trust. 
Then we reach the return moment of transformation through the gospel as criterion. So God discloses himself as the imminent transcendence behind surface reality. We internalize that, then we go out of the self in a praxis of interpretation, which is a faith, recognition, and trust. Then we reach return moment of a transformed world, transformed identity. Because return moment is always a re-internalization of the truth discovered during praxis ministry. So we got the uh, theoretical in block one of the uh, God as permeating supreme principle as imminent transcendence. Then we got the practical triad of divine disclosure, praxis of interpretation, a return of transformation. Now, Kuhn is ready to declare God as real in block three. God as real. Under rationalism and complexity, complexity of reality, critical rationalism overlooks the complexity of reality. Reality is fissured. Differences appear with every change of focus. There are many different planes of reality. The more the theologian knows of the multidimensional world, the better he will fulfill his task. Planes of reality. We take up a reflection with the aid of an appropriate method as gospel-based to be proved by results, by seeking the whole and the entire truth. It's a reflection from a particular standpoint, and it's more than just a systematic worldview. It is more than just a systematic worldview. It's more than a system of concepts. The kingdom of God and the reality of God is always beyond concept. We can approximate God in concept, but God is always beyond concept. So it concludes this part two with block three, note three. Reason in face of complexity and focus across the planes of reality equals a theology beyond systematic worldview. And that's because we realize that we must include critical argument, competition of ideas, temptation to doubt, the possibility of error, and openness to revision. We address the most fundamental aspect of what it means to be human, be human and what humanity does. To find an answer that we can justify before church and before society without ever, ever claiming infallibility. We never claim infallibility and we are always open to revision because our systematic worldview of concepts approximates but does never completely reaches God as real because God is beyond concept. That's what Professor Kuhn is telling us here. We're studying the concept of God. We're concluding that God is beyond concept. God is real. So just to recap, let's look at block one again. And basically, if you take a look at uh, note three, sub point C, Professor Kuhn posits that God is the permeating supreme principle behind surface reality. The permeating supreme principle behind surface reality. which will lead us to an empirical unity of knowing. Then take a look at uh, in block one, all the way down to four, note F, where he says God is true future for man in the world as imminent transcendence. That gives us the theoretical block one, permeating supreme principle as imminent transcendence. Then we moved into the practical consideration of the task of theology, which is always praxis-based for Professor Kuhn. Therefore, if you go all the way down to the conclusive statement in Block 2, Note 3, interpretation of experience and the filter of the gospel, 
means that we take up a venture of theology facing the real. It is a venture of risk. We're trying to interpret the ultimate Lagos order of God as imminent transcendence. That is our desire. And uh, the real actually offers humanity a call. In that praxis moment, we respond to the call, the clasis call of Christ, which Professor Kuhn calls here the call of the real. But we do get in block two the practical triad. And it simply is note three sub point E. We begin with the divine disclosure. God discloses himself in the real of the world as the permeating supreme principle behind surface reality. Then we enter into praxis, which is, again, action and reflection within a particular historical situation. Praxis, the Greek definition is, action and reflection within a particular concrete historical situation. So it's practical reason. It's uh, Immanuel Kant's practical reason. Disclosure calls us to a praxis recognition in trust, in faith. Now, by entering into that process, praxis includes going out of the self in ministry. Therefore, there will be a return moment of transformation, a transformative return moment when we take that newly discovered truth in the midst of ministry and re-internalize it and imprint the heart with the person of Jesus Christ. That's why he says that return moment is always gospel as criterion. It's return moment with, with Jesus Christ to imprint the heart. It's always gospel as criterion. After we get our theoretical supreme principle in block one, and a practical triad in block two, then Professor Kuhn took us on to his conclusion, God as real and beyond concept. That really should be the title for block three, a God as real and beyond concept, okay? God as real and beyond concept. We are not just articulating a systematic worldview. We are forming a systematic worldview because we are forming a sign model of kingdom of God. And sign model of kingdom of God is a systematic worldview that we form in the realm of positing. So we do that, but that's not God. That is our interpretation of experience as a faith in God is real. But God is beyond that sign model. God is always beyond concept. Therefore, he qualifies worldview with that which must be included, critical argument, competition of ideas, the temptation to doubt, the possibility of error, and an openness within that dialectic, an openness to revision. And it addresses the very fundamental aspect of what it means to be human because we are addressing the real of the world and the real of self-identity. Then we can find through praxis justification before the church, justification before society. It is always proof through works, proof through works. So we seek that justification before church and that justification before society, never claiming infallibility, always remaining open to revision, which uh, takes us uh, back to the beginning. Block three concludes by taking us back to block one and the self-disclosure of God as permeating supreme principle imminent transcendence. Then we move again through the practical triad. 
Disclosure, Praxis, trans Transformation. Disclosure, Praxis, and Transformation. And that really is the recall triad for the entire lesson. He concludes part two with the Praxis triad of divine disclosure, praxis, and transformation. So we get a, a great conclusion to part two, pages 78 to 88, and that will lead us next time into the beginning of part three. We will begin with page 89.